what would you have become i either wanted to become a drummer in a band the first wish i remember making is ipi noodles bro hey, this is the company that i want to work with and i sort of made up my mind i was cleaning toilets i was picking out garbage i was cleaning shit every day and after a point it made me insensitive to poop and stuff Hello everyone, welcome to Cook Bites, where we talk about anything and everything food. I'm Ranjit. I'm Sanjana. I'm Prince. And I'm Raji. So, uh, on our first episode, what we're going to be talking about is our journey to becoming a chef. So, do you want to start? <laughs> <laughs> so, each of us have our own unique stories on why we chose to do it um, and what we ended up doing right now. So. we keep the conversation candid and also i think uh, this is one question that a lot of people ask even when we go live uh, probably one of the most asked question either how to become a chef or how did you get into cooking how do you become a chef yeah which course did you do oh. do you have a degree when yes. did you start cooking <laughs> is it just passion I'm, are you actually a chef in this <laughs> yes. one course say you can't see self proclaimed or anti bro you have degree you are, you are yeah. literally a chef <laughs> Bro, I don't think I'm a chef. Bro, I think I'm a cook. A chef is a person who like manages the kitchen. By technical terms, and all, if you're going by the definition you learnt in college, yeah. <laughs> then yes. You know, yeah, like in French, chef literally means boss. No, it doesn't mean like only cooking. So in that term, yes. But then. But in general in sense, general, I don't think people refer to chefs I'm as managers of the kitchen. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so first, shall we start off by telling? What degree each of us actually has? Yes. But do you know what a degree? Oh yeah, I know. I know what a degree is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know what a degree is. Then start. I did bachelor's in science in hospitality and hotel administration. I graduated like two months ago. Same degree. <laughs> hey, <what's that? laughs> I graduated last May, March, April. Yes, he's not sure. Yes, I'm not sure. Graduate. <laughs> I guess I got my certificates. <laughs> yeah, I did the same degree, BSc in hotel and hospitality administration. Bro, hospitality and hotel administration. A uh, hospitality and hotel administration. Uh-huh. I passed out two years before. Two years or three years? Three years. You passed out in twenty seventeen, no? Mm. That's when you joined. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. no. Oh, you joined in twenty seventeen. Right? I joined in twenty fourteen. Bro, bro, I joined in twenty nineteen, bro. Oh, I passed out two years before he even mm. out of college. Five months later. <laughs> <laughs> Which college? Ah, oh, one college. I didn't mention one. I had some Chennai. It's in Tarawani. The address line cake lad. I had some now Institute of Hotel Management. Yes. Yeah. That was the first hotel management college in India. Yes. Tarawani. Yes. Nineteen sixty-five. You ended up studying in COVID, lad. Half the half the time you didn't even have to go to class then. Yeah, second year full la all the week. But third year, thank God, I did my like specialization thing. Illa na all. Specialization in what da thing? Food production. Yeah, food production. Our whole uh, course is only food production. Yeah. So we definitely have to say the full form of our college because Vaksha just doesn't do it. Yeah. So Prince and I are from the same college. Vaksha, that is welcome group, graduate school of hotel administration. Which is in Manipal, a part of Manipal University, or Manipal deemed to be university, or something like that now. But yeah. Also, Manipal getting you now. It's not in northeast. It's yes. in Karnataka because everyone just assumes Manipal is in northeast. Uh, so we studied BA in culinary arts. Yeah. So that's a course for to just become a chef. So hotel management can be anything. It can be like uh, office, front office, office, housekeeping. You can anything. Uh, Literally any to department to do with a hotel. Yes. That's it. Oh, but culinary yes. arts literally only regarding food mostly chefs but also yeah. a few other food related careers yeah we learn a few other topics that are related to the kitchen like management and accounting and math and uh, food HR, photography Conjoined photography yeah like a very very minute part of photography and writing food journalism yes um what was the dry subject we had <laughs> i think that was just thesis Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That had a the subject had a name but I don't really remember what it is. I just blocked out that memory. It's so it was too boring. Do you remember the dry subject we had? Hotel engineering. Oh you. <laughs> Luckily we didn't have anything like that. But we did have uh what culinary accounts and math. 
ஆமா we had low one kutti part no we did not did we first semester i remember one lala lo bro edho nerndha la and yeah all okay so apart from like a uh, degree you know like i think many people ask like uh, when what's the first time you cooked the what did you cook first okay except maggi and stuff like that can we, we can tell any uh, dish yes seventh grade i made parupu keer and fatima oh you made along with her huh? yeah. oh nice bro the first dish i remember making is ippi noodles bro But I don't know okay, so but it's not maggi he found a loophole okay he said not maggi he said yippee <laughs> that's all i meant like not instant noodles that will be first almost anyone i think i think the first thing i ever did was like bake a pizza or something yeah fancy boy yeah bro. no no not maggi i bought that store but ha na lo pizza sonale you shall have omelet maggi you prince me uh, like apart from maggi something it egg wait wasn't it apple pie <laughs> No 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 that is <laughs> no. among the first but not the okay. first which was if it majorly uh, so first one was uh, pepper chicken obviously i had to make it myself chinese like style. yeah chinese style you know on chutti tv there used to be this uh, one cooking show chef chef jacob chef adla vandu you show how to make uh, pepper chicken adala note down panni vechi that is the first thing i had made and it tasted good like everyone at home was allowed it uh, so that is the first thing and successful thankfully and when did you make this how old were you i think like Fifth, sixth standard. So, and then the apple pie that Sanjana is telling. So, one Christmas, uh, around Christmas time, la, I wanted to surprise my family, surprise my mom. So, I didn't even get her. I thought I'll make everything myself. Now, I came here and I got this little thing. And I made, got this little mom over there. So, the mistake I made is I didn't know the difference between maida and godma, like wheat and maida. So, I I got uh, wheat and I used the exact same measurement all of it. I couldn't even eat it. I'm going to eat it for a while. Wait, didn't you put too much cinnamon also? Ah, since like for, for a while, like I think a few months after that, few, probably a couple of years after that, when I eat cinnamon, I get that same PTSD. I'm going to eat it. Really cool. Have you gotten over that PTSD yeah, now? Yeah, now I like cinnamon. In the right amount. <laughs> Not anymore like that. You made your family do cinema challenge. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't even like. I didn't even feel it. Mama and Danga, I told mommy, never put me at the test. She said, "My grand baby, you made it. No, yaran kaatte wana apne se bhot la." Smart moves. Smart, smart people make smart moves. <laughs> Save my repetition. <clears throat> he said, "Let me do it." Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, it went on. Roast chicken, baked naan, cake. How old were you? அதே <laughs> மத்து <laughs> 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 What do you think that is called? Parpu Kadeya. Yeah, Parpu Kadeya. For me, it was just mostly sandwiches. I would make like different types of sandwiches because at that point, uh, I didn't cook like when I was in third standard, fourth standard, fifth standard and all. I summa started making sandwiches for everyone at home because uh, people come and tell me they're hungry. Most probably it would be my brother's friends who were uh, playing video games. and then they wouldn't want to go out and get something to eat i think i mm-hmm. don't know so they asked for sandwiches and i started making them and they kept uh, saying it was really nice and that i should take culinary as a profession at which point i was like no way in hell like this is like a hobby this is surely not like a career option for me Wait, at that time did you have another another career option like yeah, yeah i did have I a career become, option i that? wanted to become a veterinary doctor okay so i was like okay i mean i wasn't sure but that was something that interested me but then i was like no 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 i cannot cook for a living i can't cook every day and all like it just doesn't make sense mm. and then they were obviously smart cuz i was like sort of young i was probably in 8th or something so they kept saying it tasted really nice so i was like oh i must be doing something right so i used to obviously make them more and more food and they kept saying it was nice so i'd make more so that's how the cycle went on i think and from there it kind of graduated when i got slightly older to make sandwiches and make them food when they end up coming home drunk and they need like food 
so then obviously my brother went on to college him and his friends and then they needed food at that point so then i was like the go to person to get some food in the night so i think that's how it kind of evolved and then by the time i was done with school um i had let go of all of the career options because i didn't want to study so much anymore <laughs> i think that would have been definitely one thought for everyone over here that if we become a chef na nadhe padike vendana but that's so wrong that was so wrong because in college there is actually so much to study mm-hmm. it's uh, for all of you who are like considering this or who have ever considered this or wonder what happens in like culinary school or hotel management colleges it's not just cooking whole day like all day every day just cooking abbe yeah. style yeah. master chef mm-hmm. madri you just throw stuff in a pan and do flambe and this flame everywhere it's also so the thing not where like parathla kattaanga like you'll make something you'll add some secret thing and yeah. one person come and taste and apdi mind blown ah, yeah i don't this happened once in not my at life. all <laughs> i don't think i was proud like for <laughs> my cooking the first the for one whole year of my uh, college i remember the very first practical class we had to make caramel custard in prasenjit sir's class and uh, it was obviously the first time i was making caramel and everything i think and i poured the caramel on my finger <laughs> first class and yeah in the very first class so i like poured it on my finger and the entire first finger of mine got burnt and there was a massive blister and i was too ashamed to tell anyone cuz i was like what will they think of me it's the very first practical class and i have like a massive burn on my finger they'll probably think i'm a noob so i didn't tell anyone i just silently finished the entire practical class went home and i'm like ma <laughs> also for those of you who don't know caramel can become very hot like hotter yes. than oil yeah so it's probably one of the most dangerous it's substances like in the kitchen no? yeah it's yeah. one of like it's literally the hottest thing and like when it falls on your finger it's not even something that you can just flick off it sticks cuz it just gets stuck to your finger and you actually have to take time to wash it yeah. off so when you get like a burn you get like a bad burn like a massive blister like in seconds so that was like the worst thing i ended up doing in the first practical class ever i just went home and polymerified to my mom on how i burnt my finger and she gave me a nice solution uh, which was to put aloe vera on my finger and that worked magic so if someone burns their finger really badly i'd suggest use aloe vera because that saved my ass if you don't have aloe vera <laughs> that saved me we were all suggested pg30 wow so now that saved me <laughs> sorry that saved me Okay. in my very first cooking real cooking session in college okay you said sandwich is the first thing yeah. what sandwich i usually put like all vegetables lot of cheese cuz no. i don't think there's any any <laughs> such thing as too much cheese so like a lot of cheese i'd use the dominos oregano which comes with it so everyone has the packets lying around so vegetables like onion capsicum tomato um and lots of cheese so mozzarella cheese cheese spread cheese slice any cheese that's there all of the cheese is everything and then put the domino seasoning and chili flakes and apply a lot of butter on the outside and grill it that was like the thing sounds like a nice sandwich yeah do the same thing yes i'm, I'm a great chef yes i'm going i'm, I'm going to be like master chef level chef after making like i'll what i'll do is one side i'll put ketchup the other side i'll put mayonnaise rendu vengaya rendu thakali vechi i'll grill it and like yes mass <laughs> na so if uh, okay she said if she is not a chef she would become a, a vet yeah so what would you have become yeah. i either wanted to become a drummer in a band or suits his personality no mm. ah. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, pursue shark putting discus oh nice i three or four years out of uh, school mm. two didn't work out i was adamant on what i applied only to one college mm. What about you, bro? Don't laugh. I wanted to be an archaeologist. I have wow, that's interesting. Mind weirder, so I'm not laughing. I was very into like uh, Triassic world, all that dinosaurs and stuff. Like even till now, I I go look at uh, this. This this was the reason uh, the uh, dinosaurs went extinct. So basically, paleontologist. Yeah, almost. Yeah. <laughs> Things that friends taught us. <laughs> Who taught? Friends, friends the show. Friends, the show. Ross is a player in college. I don't care. I don't watch Friends. It sucks. Okay. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> I don't have a huge <laughs> thing on that. Yeah. So you. Mine. I had so many when I was a kid. Uh, one was. So, uh, tell us what you wanted to be in eleventh and twelfth. Yeah, no, no, the one that stuck. One that's that's the only one. No, I I don't have one eleventh. That's why I lost eleventh. Because I made up my mind. I was going to go eleventh. Ah, that I decided like in. I made up my mind in sixth grade or eighth grade. Ah, me too. Eighth. 
because because i knew like i'll take commerce so na padikala nu solluvanga i decided towards the end of 12th when i was finishing and studying for the board exams when i was like this is the last time i'm putting this much effort to study science group yeah come on nahi tha fancy like, like that they didn't know they signed that paper heli <laughs> commerce economics geography open the and he i was saying math அதுக்கப்புறம் <laughs> 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 Excuse me are you laughing at patriotism? Yeah. Cancelled. Okay. Not put me the spot on. I'm happy to be the only one. I have I have let us working the army. So you just laughed at all of them? I'm digging the whole deep. Okay. Yes, please okay. what else? Uh for some reason uh my mom told me that i don't remember but not only wanted to be a priest and i'm not even religious i don't <laughs> like i'm zero religious i don't know why uh, and then musician in the middle uh, and then bro you play piano yeah but like i don't think piano is i thought i, I think oh, i want to become like a singer because this look cool like we don't want to bother some here all i'm rocking on and then அதுக்கப்புறம்ட்டு <laughs> 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 I have no idea how I wanted to be Miss Universe. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know what it took. I don't know what they do. I didn't know there was a pageant. Just I didn't know there was anything. Yes. I just wanted to be Miss Universe. That's it. <laughs> Sounds cool, Sounds no? Sounds like a soap era. Yeah. India! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if not a chef, whatever, I can earn the most money from probably. That wasn't a thought, unfortunately, no, when I was like a child. No, like till recent. Yeah. Now, recently, when I think of it, if you're not a chef, now, from whichever I can earn the most money. No particular thing. So, this is a fair no, estimate for either. people to understand what they can expect after finishing culinary school or hotel management. So, what did each of us end up doing after that? Maybe we should hmm. say a little bit about that. So, after college. Yeah, immediately after college, what did we end up doing? Me? Okay. Okay. Uh, so after college like i was uh, home for a few months and uh, i started like baking stuff from home and uh, like selling it around like uh, my circle like other fam- family groups were here and then apartment abbi uh, and then uh, okay. so mostly whatsapp group and mari and people bought mm. and the mari now so uh, so like, was it mostly like your apartment community yeah, and stuff mostly like that, that? Like, oh, i think that's okay. like 70% and uh, the thing is like there were many kids over, so all mm. the birthday parties oh, nice. so their birthday cakes and there like uh, food for them like snacks and the mari along so that's yenaka experiment was it because most of the stuff making was first day that was for like that people like 50 people 70 people along so thankfully no disasters so you did it all alone yeah, me and mom nice and actually when it comes to like uh, cupcakes and all everything we need a lot of people to pack and stuff mm. so on the time like my my mom uh, dad sister everyone will sit and help so it was fun oh me yeah uh, after college i attended an interview uh, in leela group of hotels uh, i got selected as a hotel operations trainee so hot i was hot after college <laughs> what happened after <laughs> Then, then they made me then they made me work 17 hour shifts every day for 4 months and i was like no i'm not i'm not uh, built for this so i quit and joined uh, cook actually uh, i didn't tell you like this i was about to do sales after quitting leela oh no. then where uh, then uh, where some some scammy ass edtech startup man 
Thank God I didn't join. Why? <laughs> Then random I just I I was following him for like two years. Up away. So suddenly, Adi and I showed up in my LinkedIn. So I, I I messaged him saying I want to work with you. I, I didn't expect him to reply. Like up day he replied. Yeah, we are looking for chefs. This is my uh, this is my colleague Sanjana. Go to contact. Then I messaged Sanjana and I, I didn't get a reply at all for a day. Or you ghosted him? <laughs> <laughs> for a day or two. See, I had other work to do. Clearly, Adi and I didn't. No, no. Then I got a reply like after two days. Like, Hi, sorry, I'm half Malu. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's what you said. Sorry, I'm I'm half Malu. This is Onam, so I'm. Oh, oh right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. Random no, insult. No, sorry, half Malu. Yeah. Finish me. So like, okay. Then. அதுக்கப்புறம் we had a call அதுக்கப்புறம் i came here gave a trial then i then, then i proved myself to be a badass so they you mean cards of curry japanese cards of curry we should say but okay oh, but he's here today so <laughs> ranju college was still two months i was at home konor then came back here to chennai was there for another month Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I went for a bunch of interviews, then went to the park again. The park, park hotel, hotel, not the park. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's the hotel. Oh, Angi was same hotel operations trainee, another two-year training program. I went there three, four months in. Ah, uh, four months in, I tried ghosting them and decided to quit, and then. my boss tried convincing me and i was convinced and then i ended up staying there for 3 years in total <laughs> very very convincing yeah. boss <laughs> no yes. i i regret uh, going back after that <laughs> uh, so so it will class like crisis so the park was a toxic ex huh? you kept going back to but you hated it yeah yeah <laughs> he kept gaslighting him <laughs> thinking he was the problem not the hotel okay i think we're going to get sued for defamation please <laughs> <laughs> so, how did you join book Okay, so I resigned from the hotel ten days before uh, lockdown was announced in uh, Chennai. Mm-hmm. So I, I did, upon part, my brother also resigned from his job. I resigned from my job, thinking we'll go home, sort a few things out, and come back. Yeah. And uh, we were supposed to go there for my mom's birthday. Lockdown was announced on my mom's birthday. So March twenty third. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So. Uh, we got stuck here he didn't have a job at that time i didn't have a job at that time then konja konja ma through known people found some freelance jobs in consulting for kuti kuti outlets and all that and one night is it in the monsters yeah yes <laughs> one <laughs> night hoping. where i decided to do nothing i went to my brothers my brother and i went to a friend's place and uh, random we were talking about stuff in she told me about cook it was around 3 am or something and i was awake till like 7 8 something that day in the morning yeah bro it's lockdown bro time like doesn't huh? oh yeah <laughs> yeah lockdown yeah. I, was, i was doing 36 hours a day 36 hours <laughs> a day so yeah and mary she told me about cook i called her for her checking page out and all that and uh, arjuna's contact was there on insta mail him and i think for a few Week sir, at least a month later, huh? Kind of nine days later, I got a reply saying, "Looping in Sanjana from my team." And that was kind of nine days later, I got a reply from Sanjana. Then I had two conversations with him. Yeah, you. we had one at one point, huh. and then we put the hiring on hold completely. Huh. So then Three I told months, him wait. I got a yeah. Thing. So then I was like, wait. We had a conversation. Everything went well, and then we put hiring itself on hold. So then for three months it was just stalled. Yeah. Then the moment we were looking for people again, then I reached out to him and I was like, "Are you still looking for a job?" He was like, "Yeah, I am." So then I was like, "Okay, great. So let's you know take it mm-hmm. forward, come for a trial, stuff like that." What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? Yeah, fish curry. Sri Lanka fish curry. Then we put the yeah. I did that, and one week after the trial, I tried. It was a very dicey time. I didn't have a job. If I didn't get this job, I was going to move back to Kurnool, and my brother was moving in with a friend. And on the way, so job got okay here. We vacated the house we were shifting into, and then I joined here. Nice story. Actually, <laughs> 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 so, 
so for me as soon as i finished no actually during college during the final year itself there were placements happening in college where all like the biggest most popular hotels and everyone come for like placements and they try to take students and there was only one company that i wanted to sit for sit for and that was marriott because uh, at least in the course that prince and i did uh, we had to do three trainings so after each year we would have like a short training stint at some five star property uh so during my second year i went into the training at jw marriott in masuri and that was really good like really really good the people were nice the work was amazing the place was mind blowing so i was like okay this is the company that i want to work with and i sort of made up my mind so in third year when they came for placements uh, i sat for their placement I actually sat for two i think i sat for obri because uh ocld i didn't want ocld mm. but then all the faculty wanted me to sit for oberis placement so i said okay and i sat for that placement that was the first company that ended up coming as well i sat for the oberi placement i got through the first couple of rounds that were in college and then uh, the second company that came in was marriott and the oberi placements were in such a way that a few rounds i think there were four rounds that were in college and then the fifth round was supposed to be in another city it was in bangalore i think where we had to go meet someone or something like that oberi bangalore I think so I'm yeah. not sure I I don't know the fifth round is cuz I completely like I decided I wasn't going to go for it further and it so happened that the fifth round of placement was on the same day as sports day which I used to take very seriously uh so I decided way in advance that since the dates are colliding there's no way in hell that I'm going for that interview I'm going to drop it and I'm obviously going to go for my sports day instead and that's what I ended up doing um and the next company that came was Marriott uh I sat for the placement I got through So then I decided not to sit for anything else because I just didn't want the pressure of sitting through multiple interviews for no reason. I already knew I wasn't going to take it or I wasn't going to take any other offer. So I was just chilling for the rest of the time that people were sitting for interviews for. And then after that uh, once we finished college so we still had about what like 6 months of college left. I think they came mm. in November and then we still had like 6 months of college left. So then it was nothing so like we didn't hear from them or anything. So all of us were kind of in doubt like did we actually get the job or not? because there was no communication over those 6 months on what you have to do after college is over where you have to go which is the property you'll be working in so that was for a management trainee position so then right until the end after point it was like did i make a mistake by not sitting for any other placement because i didn't hear back from them did they ghost us is a kind of feeling that was there but then we reached out to them and then you know they got back to the college saying that everything is in order and we'll you know get in touch with you once college is officially over and stuff like that So that's what ended up happening we finished college and then we got to give our preferences on different cities that we would be okay to go to and they tried to pair us up with the first city that we gave at least most people got the first city that they gave for preference and they Amari has like a bunch of brands under them as well like 15 20 brands under them so you could also give a preference on which brand you wanted to work under or work for so they tried to kind of match that up and they set that up and I uh, ended up going and joining uh, JW Marriott in Pune and ended up working there it was an 18 month training program to become a junior sous chef I ended up working for like 10 months and then I decided to quit because similar uh, you know situation as Rajiv really really poor uh, working conditions and pretty much they kind of ended up uh, using us even though we were kitchen management trainees for doing like a bunch of other things so it was more you know oriented towards uh, you need to do guest interactions guest interactions yeah. of course bullshit so <laughs> <laughs> so basically what it means is that you don't really get to do much cooking and they don't really care about your career as a chef in that point of view they want you to represent the brand mm. they want you to show off the brand in nice night nice light to guests so you know people who they thought would be nice to go in front of guests talk to them keep them entertained during their meal is kind of who they pulled out of the kitchen to do these kind of jobs So in like uh, typically okay mine was in 17 hours my shift was usually a 15 hour shift um and out of which 4 hours would go just for guest interactions 4 hours in the beginning of the day and then 2 and a half hours towards the end of the day so twice a day like 6 6 and a half hours would go just for guest interactions that kind of seemed like a waste of time uh not in the sense that I didn't like interacting with guests but then I'd gone there for something else to learn how to cook and to like be a chef right you go and start working in a hotel assuming that you'd be in the kitchen you'd be cooking meals for these people 
but you know i kind of understood like the other side of things that as and when you keep climbing the ladder you keep going further away from the kitchen as well so you cook lesser and lesser but you end up taking credit for all the food that comes out made by the people who are inside the kitchen which just honestly didn't sit very well with me so that's when i kind of decided to just quit and go back home and take rest for a while to be honest so for one month uh i did nothing i was just like sitting at home and like chilling and then like prince i started selling food from home so for the like the next two months i ended up uh, selling a little bit of food from home i'd make these fixed menus and i put them out and friends and family mostly uh would reach out and say that they wanted this many portions on this so and so day and i was kind of doing that uh for a little while and then i found this restaurant that was opening in chennai it was called fikka so i just randomly reached out and i was like okay it sounds interesting it's a new restaurant it looks very nice the menu is different although i was interested in indian food and this was uh, continental italian that sort of thing but still i thought okay it's worth a shot to do something different so i ended up going and working in a restaurant for a little while i think that was also 10 or 11 months and then covid happened and then i quit at that point quit from the restaurant as well and that's when kind of prince uh, introduced me to cook cuz he wanted to quit and run away <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and he wanted to loop me in and leave me here and run away uh so <laughs> i thought he was just being a genuine guy offering me. me a nice job don't misread my intentions okay <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i mean he when he told me about this brand i was like at that point honestly i was like mm, seems like a nice option during covid i mean instead of not working or not doing anything or just sitting at home seems like a nice option to do something a little different because essentially even though we're not cooking for people anymore we're still cooking so we are doing what we are supposed to sort of thing so it seemed interesting and i guess they at that point there was no like interview process no. and stuff like that no trial basically they didn't have to go through me also it is in the middle of lockdown so there is <laughs> yeah. almost exactly. no one at the office nothing. prince just explained to me over a call on what he does every day cuz he was working here for a month by then mm. he just explained on a call saying this is what i do every day um so i was like okay it doesn't sound too bad you know it sounds kind of interesting actually and then adina got on a call with me and he was like uh, just asking me in general um what i was doing and what my future plans were to be very honest i had no idea what my future plans were i think this is how every interview goes where you say like the peachy perfect answers like of course i'm 100% dedicated to this company only obviously that's what everyone says in every interview so that's what ended up happening and i think even cook really needed chefs at that point yes. <laughs> still <laughs> so, actually do a plan yeah, yeah of course we still do need chefs we are still expanding um so i think everything just worked out in our favor and we ended up staying for this long because it ended up being the best decision ever and also i want to take this opportunity to kind of dis <laughs> the hotel industry yeah, not not actually not just the hotel industry but like how only being like an industry chef in a hotel or a restaurant is oh. valued if you do like a hotel management or a culinary degree mm-hmm. nobody really values any of the other uh, work that you do even though there are so many options yeah, we that are exposed to other not at all exactly yeah. so i think same to an extent we were exposed a little bit more like food photography and stuff mm-hmm. like that but not in terms of how to take it up as a career option mm-hmm. it was just one of the subjects that we went yeah. through because i think just because like 99% of the students become like industry chefs yes. they don't really show you other options yeah but well. then the other sad thing is that nine although 99% of them become industry chefs hardly any of them actually stay past like the first year yeah, or like true. the first three years or first five years you know what we were told when we were in college you were like yeah you are in, into food production so even if you get a kst job take it i'm like why would i do that in the first place so kst like, is basically kitchen, kitchen stuff stewarding. yeah stewarding So it's when you help clean up, you do the pots and pans mm-hmm. washing. That's what KST is. Yeah, then I was like, why would I take the job if it pays me like minimum wage? I paid like five lakhs for this course. I if I, if I didn't like take this course and uh, and I'm struggling for money, I would have someone would have taken that job, but yes. not me. After doing a bachelor's degree in hotel management, I don't think that's a great decision uh, to become a kitchen steward. No, but I mean. not looking down at kitchen stewarding obviously no, but it's just that exactly you know yeah. you're taking so much effort and you have this kind of dream that you mm. want to see yourself mm. in a kitchen you want to see yourself cooking but then that's like the actual reality of things where they tell you that anything in a hotel if they offer you anything just take it mm. and then try to convert into the position that you want to uh, so even if you get like he said if you get a stewarding job try to go start working in the hotel and then slowly you know talk to your, your yes mm. basically work your way up speak to your colleagues speak to yeah. everyone show your passion 
and then try to get into the kitchen and kind of uh, do that like the back door sort of way uh, hmm. but yeah probably yeah, but that kind of happens in the industry some i've seen people who are kst yeah. become chef i've but seen that as well so long yeah. it takes like 10 years for them to become a sous chef oh 15 years for them to become a sous chef i mean even if you join through a bachelor's degree and you don't get into a management training program that the sad reality is that it probably ends up taking you that long yeah. If it's a five star hotel now. But, but I don't think it takes 15 years no to become a little lesser maybe. Completely little less. Depends, less. If you're depends on where you are. It depends. No, if you're competent you'll become yes. a sous chef in like 7 years. Fair. So basically what he's trying to say is you need to know how to speak really well. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he means by competent it's not just with regard to like cooking and mm, skill of skill. cooking. You could be a great cook uh, but if you don't know how to talk your way through situations mm. then you're not going to rise up the ranks uh, very fast mm. unfortunately. So if you know how to talk really well if you're a people pleaser especially in hotel industry that definitely works in your favor uh, to yeah. go up mm. the ranks much sooner than most others and also i think all these stories like uh, if you want to become a chef you can take this as a reality check you yeah, know what it actually is like we are not yeah. going to sugarcoat it for you saying ah oh, it is a wonderful industry yeah and all of that but at the same yeah, time we're not telling you not to become a chef yeah, yeah because we still here we still here we still doing what we're doing yeah. and um we didn't lose any of the love that we have for the kitchen yeah, or anything perfect. because of the tough situations that we went through even though none of us have worked for like you know long time we haven't been in the you know working for like 10 15 20 years in the kitchen and you know say like oh we spent all our blood sweat and tears there yeah. but i think we were some of the few people who actually took a bold decision to leave when we wanted to leave and we're still doing something we love so we're still cooking and this is a great opportunity to do like other things where yeah. you have like a nice work life balance you have a nice environment to work in but at the same time you're still like a chef also when you ask like what did you do after college i thought like only right after college so only, i only said for the next 4 5 months uh, so i think i didn't get the same experience like as most people because i opted to go for an internship right like uh, so i went went an internship in the us for one year uh, which is great like because of working hours and this thing are very you get you get paid overtime yes so, yeah I th- I think that's the main motivation. Yeah. <laughs> I I like to stay back even longer because st- longer I stay back, I, more I get paid. Uh-huh. So I think it is fun. And then after that, I uh, came back here, and then that's when I got a call from Adi and now, uh, <laughs> like the contact came through some, uh, a classmate of ours. Mm. Uh, so and then Adi and I reached out because uh, that was in the middle of lockdown, mm. and there was no one to uh, like cook. Yeah, cook here. So uh, at that time, Vijay and I was doing the cooking. Mm. So. the cinematographers were stuck in chennai mm-hmm. adiyana used to do the cooking in the videos and he was stuck in erode uh, so vijayan used to do the cooking adiyan used to be on a zoom call the whole time and just instruct okay put this put this he used to be like uh, monitoring from yep. there yeah. and he used to give him step by step instructions so that's how i ran into you yeah <laughs> but that first is very fun there used to be like three people cooking i mean three people in the whole uh, office This is similar to Gaffer's and I even Prince and, and I would then. most probably alternate. Yeah. So sometime at least we were alternating where he'd come three days, I'd come two, or I'd come three days, he'd come two, and through the entire week, slowly mm. five days. So we'd keep doing that alternatively, and then slowly when the restrictions started easing up, is when both of us started coming together, mm. and then a few others came back to mm. office, and then slowly the entire strength. A few came. months later, only yeah. we met the whole we team. We didn't actually meet half the people like so. We go to often and suddenly there'll be like more people and mm-hmm. then you're like who are you? <laughs> like I've never seen you before. Every every name Only is just on Slack. On Zoom. Yeah, oh. and Zoom. Cause stand up calls will still ah. be there. So we just be like, oh okay, fine. This is what I'm doing today. This is what I'm shooting today. This many recipes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so what's nice about here, like doing the work that you're doing here? How is it different from like? I don't know what we used to do in hotels, or what is better, uh, or what do you think could be better. A lot of space for creative expression. Mm. Uh, you can cook what you what you want to cook oh, and yeah. try can out stuff. Oh yeah, can you tell stuff? a little bit also about how people think that if you go to a restaurant or a hotel, you can just go into the ah, kitchen and just the make whatever you want <laughs> and just serve the guest anything, and they just like mind blown, and then like. How that's so not true. There is something called a menu. It's fixed. <laughs> it's called a fixed menu for a reason. I so think, uh, the first first three months I was I was just crumbing uh, cheese balls, uh, croquettes and stuff for the whole three months. I, no other job I did. I I'd go to the bakery. Uh, I'd whip up pizza dough because I was in, I was uh, in charge of light counter, so I was taking care of pasta and pizza, and I kept burning myself like every day in the oven, but I didn't care. And the pro. 
அதுக்கப்புறம் ஆஃப்டர் தட் லைவ் கவுண்டர் லைவ் கவுண்டர் யூஸ் பி ஓப்பன் ஃபார் லன்ச் அண்ட் டின்னர் ஸோ நடுவில் ஐ கோ ஐ மேக் தி டோ ஃபார் பீட்ஸா தென் ஐ யூஸ் டு க்ரம் ஐ வாஸ் ஐ வாஸ் கால் த க்ரம் அண்ட் மை கிச்சன் பிகாஸ் தட்ஸ் தட் வாஸ் தி ஓன்லி ஜாப் ஐ காட் அதுக்கப்புறம் ஐ ஸ்டார்டட் ஐ ஸ்டார்டட் குக்கிங் இந்த மெனு மெனு வாஸ் சம் ஆஃப் ஃபிக்ஸ் லைக் யூ கான் தேர்ஸ் நோ ஹெட் ரூம் ஃபார் லைக் கிரியேட்டிவ் இது அதெல்லாம் எதுவுமே இல்லை அங்கே என்ன மெனுவில் இருக்கோ யூ ஹவ் டு டூ இட் ஸ்டாண்டர்ட் ரெசிபி அண்ட் டூ இட் எவ்ரி சிங்கிள் டே டே இன் அண்ட் டே அவுட் சேம் திங் ரிப்பீட்டட்லி ஸோ இட்ஸ் நாட் லைக் ஐ மேக் இட் ஒன்ஸ் ஆ ஓகே டன் டுடே யூ மேக் டொமேட்டோ சாஸ் கம் பேக் டுமாரோ இட்ஸ் ஓவர் மேக் இட் அகேன் இட்ஸ் ஓவர் டே ஆஃப் டுமாரோ மேக் இட் அகேன் ஆ அதுக்கப்புறம் ஐ டு டூ தட் தென் ஐ குட் <laughs> that was rather short understood yes <laughs> ranjit will have a little more because yeah. you have yeah. for 3 years, years which is more some than of, both of us some yeah. more than dude convince ranjit to stay for 3 years work life balance is better like i tell you guys i clean the it's room. better now yeah. ah it is better weekends are off yes <laughs> <laughs> hotels le irundinga forget about weekends off forget about forget festivals, about festivals. Off, off. Forget new year off. diwali christmas <laughs> going home before the sun sets yeah. <laughs> like, like <laughs> little bit of freedom where i no i can go home on a friday night throw my phone and pick it up only on sunday morning to check for work is a nice freedom that i sort of enjoy in india it's it's kept the house more at peace uh, working long hours and trying to because my brother and i live alone we split work in the house mm. right mm. and then uh, working long hours and not being able to go back home he does most of the things and and, and, and i think for most part of it he was taking care of me so uh, he obviously had to say in things and all that and i couldn't uh, contribute to the house and all of that so that way it was pretty tough to manage <coughs> and then yeah, i i kept falling sick and all of that yeah so, same i kept losing hair because i didn't see the hair net yeah they you <laughs> because you are supposed to wear a toque so yeah, or a bandana yeah so i the port the the kitchen is super hot alla you you don't sleep i i think i was sleeping for like 4 hours every day because what they told me was i was i was in a live counter i was taking care of omelets so i used to report at like 6 o'clock in the morning so i had to leave my house by 5 you know it was like 15 kilometers from my from my house so i used to leave at 5 be there at like 5:50 change into my kitchen attire go to the uh, uh, go to my station prep uh, uh, the night shift used to prep for everything so i used to, used to just set my station up then anga uh, they will tell me hey, come at 6 o'clock uh, after breakfast breakfast was from 7 to 11 adha kapra take 4 hours 5 hours break break shift ah uh, break shift i was doing break shift that horror yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> break shift was such a pain you can't even sleep அங்க வந்து ஆ தில் டெல் மீ டேக் அ பிரேக் ஃபார் 5 hours அதுக்கு அப்புறம் திடீர்னு அப்படியே 11:00 கிளாக் அப்போ ஓகே ஷா அப்படி நான் ஏய் வை ஐ गोइंग இவ்ளோ சீக்கிரமா கம் திஸ் வர்க் அப்படி சொல்லிட்டு ஐ யூஸ்ட் டு டேக் பிரேக் ஃபார் லைக் 2 hours 1 and 1/2 hour every day அதுக்கு அப்புறம் ஐ யூஸ்ட் டு ஸ்டே டில் க்ளோசிங் க்ளோசிங் வாஸ் லைக் 11:30 இன் தி நைட் சோ காலையில 6 மணிக்கு ஐ யூஸ்ட் ரிப்போர்ட் லீவ் அட் லைக் 12 ஜாலியான் சிலைஃப் நோ சர்க்கஸ்ம் also uh, like how you said no here we actually get credit for work we do yeah so oh, yeah i get recognition True. this kind of validation yeah after point to be honest irrespective of how much passion you have and you're making the same dish over and over and again mm-hmm. especially if it's like a five star hotel where everything is like so fixed there are like proper you have to be within the boundary lines there's like no room for anything i think restaurants are still kind of better they give you a little bit of leeway at least slightly uh it's definitely like much better compared to that because you're doing the same thing day in and day out like it gets boring you you won't forever be interested in just peeling and chopping and cleaning and like making curries and you know most probably especially if you're new you won't end up making food that actually goes to the guests you'll only make like tiny little prep that they'll end up using for something or they'll not end up using at all so that's also like a situation sometimes you know the work that they give you may not even be utilized so that's also like another side of things so overall obviously like they said the work life balance is like so much better here like they actually care about people and their health and like just generally so like i feel like just being a chef in a hotel or in a restaurant is like sensationalized way too much mm. when they get 
too little reward for too much effort like it's to be honest it's just sad because people go in with so much hope yeah. like and like third person things like we get paid a lot also, yes like, because the building looks fancy yeah. from the outside urnani ko ona hot driver hote tambi five star hote idala wale sir peri hard padiye like with the name yeah so the pay is obviously not that great so the effort to reward like i said is close to nothing you get like a minimum wage like very very less depending on of course it changes slightly based on where you work and stuff like that but it's like very very meager you can barely make your ends meet so it's just very like demotivating beyond the point initially you join in that hope like yes i will work and like tomorrow i'll become executive chef but once you work a couple of months you kind of understand the truth of how no, things sorry. actually work but the only good thing like a really good thing that um, i think all of us would have learned is uh, punctuality like mm. it's so important when you work in a kitchen it's so so important because you're punished if you're not basically yeah. it's it's partly the fear i think why people learn to be punctual but either way is like it works in your favor like in life in general mm. i think that's one good thing yes definitely like a good thing you learn to be an ultra punctual person and uh, generally by being in like culinary or hotel management school you learn to be very clean mm. so like your grooming is very very important right from your nails to your hair to the way you look you learn to keep yourself presentable <laughs> That is one thing that you are not allowed to have in hotels. Which need to be clean shaven yeah, every day. Most hotels. That's a problem, though. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> didn't Park have? Didn't Park have no, beards? No, Park. Here I joined. They took off French beards. Oh. Oh, okay. Now a lot of restaurants and hotels ah, do restaurants, yes, do but... accept. You know, you can be who you want to be, but like in a hotel, basically I can't look the way that I look. You cannot have piercings. You have to limit your tattoos and things like that. They would no be visible like very, tattoos. Yeah, they food. would be very strict on that, but. completely depends on again the company that you're working for and who you like where you're working with city or working and stuff like that but like in general i think these two are good things like you learn like hygiene is something that you mm. learn along with punctuality uh, so yeah i think I everything learn, is not bad yeah <laughs> I, i think i learned a lot about cooking also like uh, in terms of basics like cutting cleaning doing prep uh, organizing those are all stuff that yeah. you learn very but well but they didn't teach me anything thappa yeah. pannuva yeah they They, blast yeah, they blast me. They were like, "Buy it, let it out. I'll, I'll do that." Everything. Yeah. Then it stuck with me. Yeah. Uh-huh. I guess there are different ways to teach, lah. Yeah. This, that, that's this one just of one them. of the ways. Just traumatic, man. <laughs> True. So And very unnecessarily glorifying of hard work. Which, yeah. So one the, one thing stick with me. Mm. The work hard and you. Oh yeah, you can't tell. I'm I'm done with my nine hour shift. I have to go home. They look down on you if you like tell like done with my shift. Yeah. I'm going home. They like look at us, man. We came here before you. We're yeah. leaving after yeah. you. Yeah. Also, most shifts on their on their one day off, they don't have the energy for anything else. They just sleep the whole day. Oh, yeah. 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 Some that, companies have a, a six thing. six day off thing. Yeah. But yeah. most yeah. still yeah yeah. yeah. But yeah. most still have only like a four day off. Four day. Mm. Yeah. Four And month. obviously, like they Clarify. said earlier, mm. you can forget about Saturday Sunday. You'll get it on some random weekday. Usually, you have to make it. Usually, it's on like Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah. So now Monday lo the day. Monday week lo kaan dekhne ka bolo. Yaar mere ko mata hai. Exactly. So you don't even get to see friends or family because yeah. mm. when you're working, they're free. When they're working, you're free. So you can forget about socializing. Yeah, no social having, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hotel, <laughs> having friends yeah. or anything like that. Hotel, home. Hotel, home. That's all. I think every day. So can we probably in yes. like a in few sentences? Yeah, in a few sentences, say like basically the topic. What was your journey to becoming a chef? But like in a very short way. Like each of us. Yeah. Could you start? Yeah, sure. So obviously the first thing to do is decide that you really, really want to do this. Mm. I think that is something that you have to take right at the beginning. And even once you join college or once you start working, if you feel like it's something that doesn't work for you, don't be afraid to drop it and try something new. Mm. I think that's something that's super important. Like you're not stuck with something for life. At least not in today's day and age. Not anymore. there are like bunch of other things that you could do next choose a degree and a college that kind of suits you and seems interesting to you because i think i made the right choice at least uh, the college that prince and i went to was really fun but at the same time we learned a lot we had a we had great exposure as well so that was like a great decision which changed so many things and then working in an environment where you are like actually appreciated 
and definitely keeping in mind that you know being a hotel or restaurant chef is not the only thing that you can do there's so many other things so you should be like open to being in the food space but in different ways mm. i think that's the way that i became a chef and i'm still a chef only because of that oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like she said also be sure of what you want especially in this industry don't take others opinion seriously that's one thing ang easy sort of poiranga you do this work in a settler and all of that reality is completely different from what they say so go check it out for yourself see if it works for you see if it doesn't and take it as it comes and sometimes gritting it out and holding on to it maybe pays off so yeah that's it yeah uh, the same thing like make sure you really want to do it you know i wasn't sure until my second year whether uh if i want to continue doing this because uh i was i was rethinking my choices because i wasn't very keen on like studying hotel engineering housekeeping and all that then in my second year uh they made me do internship and they didn't give me what i wanted because i was i, I wanted to become a chef but they gave me housekeeping so what i was doing was uh, i was cleaning toilets i was picking out garbages i was cleaning shit every day and after a point it made me insensitive to poop and stuff mm-hmm. <laughs> explain <laughs> i think that explains <laughs> i think that explains <laughs> then i was i wasn't after my internship i still wasn't sure if i wanted to do hotel management then i i i went out of my way i got i got an internship in westin in kitchen so i did i did work there for like month and a half then i made sure i i wanted to do kitchen then uh, took the decision to become a hotel operations trainee so even if you're not sure about uh, the degree maybe like you'll you'll have much more clarity once you do an internship so adukulla don't like premature or drop out Well, and if you are someone like him who is like super clear that they want to be a chef there are other course options as well yeah hmm. so a lot of people end up taking hotel management thinking i'll keep my options open so that i can do anything in the hotel space hmm. but especially if you're a chef and you decide that you want to do a chef i think it makes more sense to do like a culinary degree because again specialized. again yeah. it doesn't mean you're just cooking day in and day out you have theory classes you have practical classes like it's a mix of everything but most of the subjects at least are directed towards the kitchen and different cuisines and different techniques that you learn so it makes more sense to do a culinary degree uh, okay i think you'll ask yourself if you are really passionate to like cook cook at home or like actually take it up as a career because that's a big commitment and also a lot of people drop out like i think yeah. our class myself i think barely any who are yeah, still half of doing them something in the space not into food they are into something else they just change career switch careers mm. so i think it's a big commitment so really ask yourself if you want to become a chef uh, do it full time Uh, because it does make unfortunately the industry does make you lose your uh, your love for cooking a little bit because of the work but then uh, there's a lot of different uh, options yes which yeah. thankfully exactly i felt i stumbled upon and yeah. then like all of us did yeah so this is very fun of course this is very fun and like to be very honest i think if i ever had the opportunity to go back to like our college or any college and just speak about different options that you have mm. which pay better which give you a better work life balance and just give you a lot more room to like be a chef in your own way i think i'd obviously take that i think anyone would take the opportunity to go back and like speak to actual like students who are still doing or pursuing mm. the degrees that we did uh, to have like these opportunities that we're having today because i don't think everyone by chance will just stumble upon it yep. like you should know that mm. these options are available to you there's like almost maybe, no awareness exactly there exactly there's no awareness so how do you find out that there's ever a job like mm. this and even if you get a job like this how do you know that you can take it confidently without like being sure on whether you'd be settled <coughs> in life or whether it would be good for you so i think if anyone's listening and wants to come and talk in your college about how this is nice please yes. hit us up <laughs> hit us up we definitely be willing to do that and hire a few people as well for a price what no no charity tane bit for a price okay yes we want we want more chefs da that is the price oh no no college will be pay sir no no not like that chumma da say he won't do it three of us will do it <laughs> maybe yeah, ranjit won't do it as well will you what? you happy to do this la talking colleges on how these career options are yeah, available yeah, yeah. 
if everyone is down i am okay <laughs> for free making this a better place than yes okay okay then i think we will see you next time <laughs> signing off bye thanks for listening yeah thank you for listening please do come back to our podcast subscribe 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 yeah please come back to our podcast like share and subscribe to cook tv outro one ane kudutta yeah i think we we'll are doing this every week yes. so you can expect a fun podcast from us and from our team members so it's not just going to be us every time mm. it's going to be interesting topics and if you have any suggestions feel free to drop Please. them in the comments yes so there will be comments easier. on this thing yeah. okay so <laughs> in the comments below i think yeah. yes. <laughs> and we'll try to talk about that yes bye bye okay <laughs> bye bye